someone asked you about police brutality and you said, I'm not against police brutality. I'm against the police. So could we start there with that comment and have you as you reflect on the most recent uh, ons going ongoings at uh, uh, in Ferguson, Missouri, uh, and this 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 just continued police violence against black people here in the United States and around the world. OK, well, I think that's what happens um when you find when one finds oneself that was at the Halle Garima Halle Garima's bookstore in Washington D.C. and uh, it was an all black audience, so uh, I didn't have my guard up. <laughs> <laughs> I might have said it differently in a classroom or something. I'm just I'm kind of joking, but it's interesting. Uh, and I what I meant by that was that it, you know it was a bit tongue in cheek, but it's absolutely true. I mean, of course, I hate police brutality. I mean, I black people in the United States and worldwide uh, are the only people, and I, and I say this categorically, the only people for whom it is probably not uh, productive to speak in terms of police brutality. I know that we have to because we're, we're, we're forced to speak in terms of police brutality, police brutality. There's a way in which all black speech is, is always coerced speech in the sense that uh, you're always in what Sadia Hartman would call uh, a context of slavery so that anything that you say, you, you're having to think about, well, what are the consequences of my speaking my mind um, going to be? So one of the consequences of talking about what happens between us and the police uh, in the world is that the world, and this goes for you know democracy now, it also goes for our post-colonial uh, comrades, the world is not ready to think about policing and the way in which that it affects black people. And so what we have to do is we have to ratchet down, we have to always ratchet down the scale of abstraction so that we don't present the world with the, the totality of our relationship to the police, which is that we are we are policed all the time and and everywhere, we have to give the world uh, some kind of discourse, some type of analysis in bite-sized pieces that they are ready to accept, so that they can have some amount of empathy for us and uh, do some kind of adjudication um, politically or. Uh, legally. So that's why police brutality then becomes the focal point of the problem. When in point of fact, uh, we have, police brutality has never identified our problem. Our problem is one of complete captivity from the birth to death and um, coercion as the starting point of our interaction or the response from the state and ordinary white citizens, not an ordinary um, Latino, Mexican, uh, Native American, Asian citizens. I mean, we are we are the world's captive. And so, when I said when I was in that ball black room and I said I didn't, I don't hate police brutality. I hate the police. I think that most of the people in that room immediately understood what I was saying, but also understood. Um, the problems with going outside and talking about that. One little example in the way that this, this conundrum, this, this paradox, affects the way in which we are able to speak to uh, white people and speak to our so-called uh, allies of, of color. You know, you convicted these black people, some to 300 years in prison, you know, some to 45 years, you convicted them on no evidence, but on the word of one police officer. Uh, would you want that to happen if, if you know, it was your child? And this, one of the jurors said, without any sense of irony, that if it was my child, we would need evidence. So the problem then is not where the film situates the problem. It's not where the the uh, media, so even the left media on, on Pacifica, situates the problem. They always situate the problem in the rogue actions of the police. The problem is the place of blackness in the libidinal economy, which is to say in the collective unconscious of everybody else. 
And if we were to actually understand that better, we'd, we'd understand that blackness is always already criminalized in the collective unconscious. The only problem for white supremacy and anti-blackness when it is, you know, happening to black people in Mexico, for example, the only problem is a problem of logistics, a problem of mechanics, which is how can we make the criminalization stick without um, blowback from the black community? It's not a question of something was wrong that happened to this black person. These black people suffer or they exist under police brutality because policing is what keeps everybody else sane. Policing blackness is what keeps everyone else sane. And if we can start to see po the policing and the mutilation and the ag aggressivity towards blackness as not being a form of discrimination, but as being a form of psychic health and well-being to the rest of the world, then we can begin to reformulate the problem and take a, a much more iconoclastic um, response to it.